prepared for your people. That is what matters. I commit every heart here into your hands. I pray that let every heart be receptive unto your word. Let the heart be so fertile that everything that you put on it shall grow. This and more, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. Today is the last Supper Sunday. We have been hearing and learning and doing things concerning the Lord's Supper. I have talked to you many times about this. Today we are going to do something different as God laid upon my heart last Friday. Those who came last Friday evening, that was Sandra, Shaki, Eric. It was good last Friday. Those who didn't come, you missed. So we are going to learn from what happened last Friday. It was almost a heated argument here. Because if you quote the Bible and you don't say what the Bible says, uh -uh, I don't agree with you. And if you say something, you say you are a teacher, and somebody asks you a question, don't say, I think. Let the Bible answer it. Amen. So we are going to learn from the Word of God. But before then, questions. I'm about to pray. Let's teach this. This is better than I can flow with you, right? Uh, no preaching. Put the preaching somewhere. Let's teach. Let's learn. Is it? Are you okay? It's like you are bombing. What's going on, baby? You cool? You chill? Wanna translate for me? <coughs> All right. Okay. More photo, eh? Yeah, it's more, yeah. Yeah. If it is more, eh? So that we get it. So that we can all share with you. No? So you're going back into your bag, eh? Oh, God bless you for putting the phone into your bag. Did you bring your Bibles today? What about the phone there? Ah, okay, it's good. Yeah. Why do we take the break when we come to the Lord's Supper? Who can tell me? Why do we, yes? To remind ourselves of Jesus' sacrifice. We take the break to remind ourselves of the Lord's sacrifice. Thank you. Let's clap for him. <laughs> Who else have another answer? Why do we take the bread? Why do we, yes? Okay, to remind ourselves about the life of Christ when he was on earth. Is that what you say? You need to answer it, man. Take the blame. You see the blame? This is my, uh, this is my body. That was the last year. So you want to say that the bread represents his body and the last supper that he did. You did well. Let's clap for him. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good one. So what is the importance about the bread? What's the significance? The importance about the bread. But not biscuit or another thing or, or meat or fish. But specifically bread. Why bread? Because bread is life. Bread is life. Let's laugh for people. Bread is life. So any bread we eat, do we have life? If you cook brought by Abertine, GB, Carrefour, and you chop, is that is that a life? You want to say something? Uh -huh. Eric? So the bread is the word of God. So when you eat bread, you have eaten the word of God? Uh huh. Um, something? Like I said, that when we take things for here, then it's a lot it's for Okay, that means the bread will be taken is heaven. Yeah. The bread must have a meaning. Christ should have given us fish. He should have given us uh, sheep meat. Because he said, I am a sheep. He should have given us something different. But he specifically gave us bread. Why bread? Go on. Because Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Thank you! Let's have a deep on it. He said, I am the bread. So bread signifies who? Jesus. He said, said to the uh, Pharisees and said that, your fathers ate manna on the wilderness and they died. But I, I am the bread that came from uh, heaven. John 6.35. Can somebody read there for me? John 6.35. 
John 6.35. Yes, please. I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never succeed. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Who said that? Jesus. He said what? I am the bread of life. What did he say? I am the bread of life. Verse 48, he repeated it and said, Thank you. Verse 58, what did he say? Aha. So he emphasized it how many times? Three times. Verse number 35, he said, I am the bread of life that came down from where? Heaven. If you eat, you would never feel hungry. And verse 48, what did he say? I am the bread of life. Verse 15, what did he say? So this is the bread that came from heaven. He was referring to who? Himself. So that means during the last from when you will take the bread, who are you taking? Jesus into you. Okay, let's put that one aside. What about the wine? Why did he not give us water to drink? If you eat, I told not to drink water. Or you drink tubular. Uh -huh. No, you are spoken today. Uh -huh. The wine represents his blood. Let's clap for baby Makati. Good one. It represents his blood. What again, Mother Yoga? Why did he say not give us water to drink? Gulang, 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 and wash down the bread. But he gave us wine. Why? Somebody has said it. Say something different, please. Um, the blood uh, purifies us. Purification! Let's clap for him. One more. The blood does what? If the blood represents, the wine represents blood, the blood purifies our sins. So, what again can the wine do or the blood do? Yes, is he? It gives you eternal life. You have done well. We've been learning all these things. But there's something that struck me last Friday when our deacon was teaching it here. And I took it home and I put it right and God said, I should tell you something. I'm not going to talk about the blood today and the wine. Last month I spoke about it. Two months ago we spoke about it. Today something different. Anytime we are dining with the Lord, we come here and say, if you are a second wife, don't come here and take the last supper. None of us here is a second wife, are we? Second husbands, are we? No. Oh, uh, Jeffy, you are a second husband. <laughs> okay, Jeffy is not a second husband. And uh, Air Hostess is not a second wife as well. But every time we quote a quotation that says, or we bring out from the church's this thing, that if you are not baptized, don't come. That one alone, let me put in unhealing stakings, disqualifies you from coming to die with the Lord. And if it's Eric Yama, personally, okay? if it's Eric Yama, wrong, you believe in Christ, you will be born again. All those holy things that you used to do, you do them no more. Christ is in you, all right? The Holy Spirit has taken over you. He's helping you to structure your life as God wants you to be. But when they come, the Lord says, oh, oh, oh. Are you baptized? No. Mm -mm. It's the point, eh? That means you must know why we say so. So that you'll be eager to have yourself being baptized. Last week we also learned, those who were here Friday, if somebody dies and he was not baptized, would he not have life? Is that what the answer, question was? And somebody answered and said, mm, maybe, maybe, you have only one 
one chance. And it's 50-50. Hey, my friend, be careful. Either you are dead or alive. So right now that you are alive, you better watch out. Don't use your life as chacha. Who is the youngest person here? Apart from my two kids. Eliezer, how old are you? 15. Yeah. 15. Okay. Nimach is 13 here, though. Uh -huh. From 13 upwards, no, Portia is not 13. No, 13. No, 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 they are not, they are kids, they, they are not part. They are men that are teens, of course. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. From 13 and upwards, you are ready to be baptized. You're going to learn about that. So that when you go home, talk to your parents, and then they have this one done. So water baptism, that's where I begin from. There are three types of baptism. Begin from water baptism. That's the basics. So learn this thing and then have it being done. What is water baptism? The word baptism comes from a Greek word, baptism, which means to immerse or to dip. To baptize something then means to completely submerge that thing inside liquid or water. So when the Roman Catholic take up a baby and the priest put on the head, is that immersed in water? No. That one is not water baptism. So if you have done that one before, it is not baptism. Yes? Isn't it not only in the Church of Pentecost that we don't conclude that sort of baptism as baptism? It, it, that's not what the Bible says. It's like just the whole in The whole, the whole Bible, thing in general. Uh -huh. That's why I say we always have to let the Bible answer it. Mm. When Jesus Christ was being baptized, they did not put water on his head when he was an infant. He went to the Jordan, John the Baptist dipped him in, and he came up. So when he was a baby and they put water on his head, it wasn't baptism. If that was the one that was done, that is what we should do. Amen. Okay. Two. In the biblical sense, to baptize a person means to put that person completely under water, then immediately raise him or her up again. So the water must cover you. I'll tell you why it should cover you. What does water baptism signify? When God baptizes you into Christ, you become a new creation in your spirit, not only your body or your flesh. Your body remains corruptible until the resurrection. This body, it will rot. But the inner man of you still lives on. You become a new creation. So, when you read the book of Romans, I don't want to jump. Let me take it one by one. Water baptism is a symbolic act whereby a new Christian identifies himself with Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Water baptism is a public profession of a person's repentance and faith in Christ Jesus in a way of giving outward testimony to an inward, inward work of Christ. Let me take this one one by one. Point. Water baptism is a symbolic act whereby a new Christian identifies himself with Christ's death. We believe that Christ is God. He came in human flesh and human being will die. So if you believe that Christ has died, then you too must die. Hey, should I also die? Yeah. You should also die. Not die that you die, then you are gone. No. Through the water baptism, you are dead. Number two, you are dead means all those things you used to do, if you were a thief, you still know more. If you are a gambler, you gamble no more. If you are whatever, 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 you do them no more. You are now being born again. And if you don't die, you don't be born again. For example, if I want to plant maize, corn, what do I do? I put it in the ground. I cover it with soil. That seed dies first before it germinates. All right? So before you become a new born baby Christian, like we say, born again, you must die. The wages of sin is? So as we sin, we died. Two, 
burial. When Christ died, was he buried? Yes, in the tomb. So through water baptism, we, okay, let's go to the cemetery. The people who are there, where are they? They were where? Uh -huh. Do you see their hands hanging outside them, outside there, or their head getting out? So it might the same way we get you into the water, it means we are burying you in the water. Mm -hmm. So when we are sprinkling water in your head, your leg is outside. Now, is that burial? No. I've never seen somebody burying and then the leg is outside the coffin. <laughs> Say, I'm going, oh, I'm going, oh, I'm going, oh, I'm coming to you. So when you are being immersed totally in the water, you are in one with Christ, also being buried. The last point, you are identified with Christ, which is resurrection. That means when you get into the water, we must get you out. Just as Christ got out of the tomb. So if these three things are met, then we say that water baptism has taken place. Just as Christ died, he was buried, he was resurrected. Amen. Amen. Question. Oh, okay. So they do that to prevent the children from dying. Ah, okay. They have a reason for their doing their own. But as for us, we are not going to die as babies. Amen. Uh -huh. So we are going to take our Bibles and read something short from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 3. And there's only one way to find out if you are there. Portia, you brought your Bible? Portia, did bring a Bible? Oh, Portia. Portia, I hope you mind. Stand up and read for us. Since you did not bring your Bible. Mm -hmm. 6, verse 3 and 4. Robbie. Did you bring your Bible today? To oh, Robbie. You went to school yesterday? Friday you went to school? I was in Paris. Sorry? I was in Paris. You were in Paris? Ah, you didn't go to school the whole week. Oh, Robbie. Please, let's hear her reading from Romans 6, 3. Uh-huh. Or do you not, not, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were very, very, very into true baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. Don't you know that so many of us were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? Like I said earlier, when they baptize you, you are baptized with Christ in his death. And then when we get you out of the water, you resurrect with Christ. So those of you who are, have not yet been baptized, you have not experienced the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Having done so, you become completed. It's stages. Yeah? Salvation is stages. Baptism is one of the stages. So desire, eager for it that your parents will arrange or the church leaders, so that you get yourself being baptized. Verse 4. Please, can you read verse 4 for us? Mm. Oh, you read all. You read all. It was too fast. Let me take the verse 4 again. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death. That's what I said. That, like as Christ was raised out from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. So the moment you get out of the water, you must begin to show a newness of life. The things that you have done, they are gone. What does this baptism also signify or the importance of it? You tell the whole public that, hey, people, listen, I was a thief, I'm a robber. I was a prostitute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I was a biggest guy, yeah, 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 yeah. But now hope I surrender all to Jesus, I surrender. I'm going to wash my sins away. The whole area they see you being baptized. So 
You said you have repented though. They have stopped stealing. Three months later, they saw you. Hey, I know the one they baptized last week in River Jordan. See what you are doing. Oh, it creates awareness for you. You understand? So right now, if my cat is doing something sticky, nobody sees they, they are catch you. Hey, you are baptized. Don't do that. So it's a public confession. Is water baptism very important for you? I'll just use as an example. You didn't do anything wrong. You have a question? No, but she was asking, can you baptize me? No, as as she let you go. Huh? Oh, if you can't, I'll let me hope you be a drink to get baptized. Okay. The question is, if you are baptized, mm -hmm. And you slipped back to do bad things, you went back to sin. Should you not come to the Last Supper? Is that what you asked? Or should you not be baptized again? Okay, neither. Okay. You are allowed to come there unless you have confessed your sins and stopped them. Because every day, concursa, concursa, concursa. Ooh, Sunday is Last Supper. Ooh, shit, I forgot. I was half not just concursa on Saturday evening. Ice! I'm sorry. I said no, but Mr. Sandra, I said, but uh, you confess your sins. I'm not doing it anymore. You can't come. That means you do it express. What did you say? Then are stupid. You do it. You go and confess. You do it. Just one year. But baptism is once because you die only once. Christ that how many times? Once. So don't say you were a, 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 a thief. Robbie, I'm coming to you, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were baptized, you stopped all the things, and you went back stealing again, so you should go and baptize you again. It's only once. Uh -huh. What was your question, please? See, if today uh, I commit a sin and I confess, and then tomorrow I'll go and baptize, and I commit a sin and I confess, <laughs> no, no, yeah, what is the difference? Yeah, like your sister. No, no, but I mean, like, then, what is is the baptism going to do something to me? Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. Yeah. We will we'll raise there. It's, uh, it's, your question is in it. We will raise there very soon. I'll answer you. Yes. So, when you baptize, you die with God. Yes. You die with Christ. Yes. Yeah, sorry. So let's say I was a good Christian. I do a lot of bad things. I hate people, and then I get baptized. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that all those sins, God will I cancel them from His book, and I'm forgiving totally, totally. for all those sins. For all those sins, because you remember them. The Bible says you forget your sins and you remember them no more. On judgment day. Paul. Paul, you know Paul? Yeah. He was frugal soul. If you, if, you, if you miss everything, I cannot, I cannot hear you to answer you, so listen to me first. Saul did a lot of havoc, killing Christians. Yes, he killed them. He was on his way to Damascus to even to kill more. When Jesus arrested him. But then he, he, um, he converted, he was baptized. We never hear in the Bible again that Paul went again killing people. That was the end. So, uh, David, you will not be baptized and go back and do it again. Back. No, no, no. It's once and for all. You won't go back again. Because the reason why you will be baptized is that you, you have a change of heart. The inner work of the Holy Spirit in you is convicting you. Yeah? If you do something wrong, you will be a long case. Something inside of you tells what you do is not right. Right? We call it conviction. The Holy Spirit convicts you. Ah! I will do this thing again. Ah, you la 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 la. And if sincerely inside of you, you stop it. It is not your power that helps you to stop, but the spirit within you helps you to stop. Yes? And then, since you want to put a seal to it, it's like you are entering one room. Don't want to come back out of this room. But the door is still open. You close the door. The temptation is, I can open the door. No. Let me put key, click, click, click. Leave the key inside the door. Temptation, I can turn back the key, I can open the door. To stop that, throw the key away. 
That means you don't want to go back anymore. So the moment you decide that you want to have your being baptized, you have to make a point that you don't want to go back to where you were before. So, after being baptized, David, you don't come in still and go back and baptize still. The water will finish. <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. Yes, perfect. Were the disciples of Christ baptized? Yes, they were baptized. But, uh, <laughs> when Christ healed a, a man, he said, go and sin no more. So if I, I were to be that person, and I wasn't baptized, but I, I sin no more, and I died, would I still be? Well, we reached there. Yes? Now, the first step of baptism, the importance is, the first step of faith is obedience in walking in one's faith. A new Christian should most definitely be water baptized because the Bible commands it. As you are a Christian, you have come to believe in Christ. He commands that you be baptized. Let's see what the Bible says about this. Okay. Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20. Matthew 28. The first person will be applauded. Wow, that's my great ball. Matthew 28, 19, please. Go to therefore and teach all the nations, but find them in the Hold on, take it one by one. Number one, go. Say go. Go. Uh -huh. To all the nations and do what? And do what? What am I doing here? I'm teaching you. All these principles I'm teaching you, it will help you to have another regeneration of mind. You will change your mind and stop all the things that you've been doing. After that, that you have given up and said, Christ, I'm giving up all those last four things I'm doing. Now I'm coming to you. The Bible says I should do what? Uh, baptize them in the name of the Father. Good one. So it's a command to be baptized. Please, you can say that. Thank you. You see that? So it comes to our point that you become obedient. I know that most of you here, you are not saying, I don't want to be baptized. Oh, I don't want to be baptized. No, I think it's not that. that. That opportunity has not come yet. But if you have purpose in your heart, me, baptism, blah, 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 eh, eh, no. Somebody baptized in the U and the YouTube and the water carrying away, he was there. No, I'm baptized, I'm afraid. Christ said you should, you will not die. Uh -huh. Sister Pep, let me answer your question with this short video that was circulating on the social media the other day. Uh -huh. During the baptism, the water carried the guy off and he died. Will he go to heaven? Yes. yes. You see, he has sincerely in his heart confessed his sins. He has decided to put a full stop to it. After that, he began a new sentence by walking into baptism, signifying himself with Christ in his death, his burial, and resurrection. And unfortunately, he couldn't resurrect, and he's gone. So, manly speaking, I'm saying me, I don't know what God will do. Me speaking, I think that guy will go to heaven. Okay, but Ada, let's take uh, this prophet, Obin. Let's go, let's go, wait. Let's take Obina as taking someone like that, that guy. Obina was baptizing the guy. And we know that uh, he said, <laughs> you will see, he said you will see them by their spirit. You see, they are first prophet. And for us Christians, we know that some things he's doing, we think that he's a first prophet. So if he's baptizing that guy, and he was drawn and he died. Uh, hey. uh, <laughs> there's a yeah, right. Yes. Uh, right now, I can give you an answer that it's based on the faith that the guy used to go there. So if the guy's faith was, he had, let's say, although, let's say, as you said, Obinim was, uh, let's take it just for example, that Obinim is a false prophet. But he has preached the word of God to someone, and the one has got to believe and he has allowed himself to be baptized, the guy will go to heaven, in my opinion, because he's not fully obedient, but because of the word of God that he had, and he has given 
his faith to be baptized, the guy will go to heaven. Thank you very much. God bless you. So, uh, Pep, in this sense, your life that only depends on the baptizer, but on your faith and also your repentance. So if a thief who just stole something from uh, CNR, say, hey, I'm a pastor in a uh, of Mercy, let me go and baptize you. So, oh, let me confess. You confess totally everything and you lead him. That faith is what will save you, not the one who is baptizing you. So I can, I can attend uh, like a faith church and hear the word of God, and I still see myself as a good person. In a faith church, they don't read the word of God. But we let we preach the word of God. Like what you say, like we should not deviate from this topic. Let the believer be an amen. He said the faith, but hey, Mark sixteen sixteen. Yes. Of course. Are you listening to our sister's contribution? Yeah. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you will know that where you are going is a wrong place. Yes. A place where they give you to numbers. A place where they say, Oh, we are going to die tomorrow. What kind of church is that? The Spirit of God in you will convict you, and you will know that where you are going is a wrong place. If you want to talk, raise your hand up. I'll let you talk. Kwane, please. Please, I want to ask this time. Um, in Europe, it's different from Ghana. When you go back to Ghana, I was baptized at the age of 16 years. And I can't remember, um, 15 and 14 were not allowed to be baptized. Mm -hmm. But when you come here, it's 13 and now 14. So I don't know. Is it because we are in Europe? Uh, now, either Europe or Ghana, what does the Bible say? I always ask myself, so what does the Bible say? Specific age that you have to go, or that might be so Well, you know, thank you. Thank you. Let me answer you. Let me answer you here. I have it here. <laughs> Okay. Even a child, I have it somewhere here. Oh. Okay, let me answer it straight from here. Um, on it. The age of consciousness, the moment a child begins to know right and wrong, sin and righteous, he is even good enough or old enough to be baptized. Now, the reason why we put age limit here is that, how old is your daughter? 10 years, you know she doesn't know certain things. Uh, 12? Okay. Shaki, Shaki, how old are you now? I got 16. Wow, she's never old. And then say, you have infinity. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm using a as an example here. He knows where the church is, you know where the cafe is. He know where you go to gamble. He know where his mother puts his wallet. His father puts his money. He can make a decision to take money and go and gamble or to come to church. He can do that. But a child who doesn't know those things, it is, it is not, it's not good. So when we come to Europe and we say 13 years, uh, we say the Europe guys, are they matured? No. The 14 in Ghana, are they matured? No. But it all depends on the teachings and the principles they go through through the Sunday school. They have to teach them what is wrong, what is bad. Last week I was teaching the children how to pray. Only one line they know. I said, okay, let me add four lines for you. Hey, 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 that we want ten. And I have to list them one by one. What God should give you? What God to take away from you? You see, I had to balance it for them to know. That age, they don't even know these things. You can't baptize them. So it all depends on the kind of teachings we give them. There are some adults here. Who are even worse than the Scranic in mm -hmm. To be honest, they are grown in figures 45, 46, but they are inward, they are babies. That's why Paul said we feed them with milk. A time has come, we have to give them bones. And I can put my hand on my chest before the Lord that I said that most of you here are spiritually matured than the people in the central. I tell you frankly, 
Why? Every Sunday, I teach you stuff, new things from there. But when you go to the center, they don't have time for that. One person will come and say, boom, boom, we close, they go. But I give you time to ask the things you don't understand. Don't we do it here? Yes. But so do we, you, you learn things. The things you don't know, you learn. The question that baffles you, you ask. But center, you don't have time for that. That's why Jesus said, go in therefore and do what? Teach them. He didn't say go and preach to them. So I can say that it depends on the teachings that they have. Because at, in my home, when we come, Christopher, he prayed before we go to bed. Yes. Every day, we go around in circles, we pray. And what she likes is saying the grace. And so when they read, surely. He will shout and say, surely. <laughs> you see that? At the age of three, she knows those things. So by 13 years, my daughter will be equipped, ready to be baptized. So I will say that it depends not on the age, but the maturity and the teachings. So my problem is, is, you know what, when you go back to Ghana, we are all at the same church. But why is it that always it's like, it depends? No, because the, the one year difference should be a, be a problem. No, the problem there's no is, one year difference. It's starting from 14, 13. Uh -huh. And then they will not allow for 15 years. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I don't understand. Are we doing our own things here or...? Right, we, we are not doing what you call a denominationalism. We shouldn't go there. The importance is the baptism itself. Yeah. Since they were 12 or 13, did they sprinkle water on their heads or did they immerse them? Before that, were they being taught of wrong and right, good and bad, even the adults, 40 something, 35 something years, if they don't teach you first and they baptize you, it's, it's on them. It's like you are dirty and you're putting cream on your leg. <laughs> the slap never gets up. You need to be taught, yes, so that you will repent. Turn your heart, your heart upside down. I want the Holy Spirit to come into you and change you. Then you can go and wash yourself off. So if you are not being taught about the word of God, doing what you do and not, Shaki, please stand up, then you, it's a waste of time. So the basics shouldn't be about the age, but about the teachings. Yes. So the person can repent. Yes. Yes. But at the age of that, if you have done nothing wrong, <laughs> why do you Okay. Mark 16, verse 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You believe what? There are certain things you should believe. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, I believe. He came on this earth to die for me. Eh? For me? Yes. You were a thief. He said, stop stealing. God is going to kill you. I've asked God to kill me instead so that you will stop stealing. You see, you believe that one. If you have this, will you go back and steal? Say, if not then, that means you believe what I'm saying. Then have yourself being baptized. So, like I was answering your question, if this kind of belief, his death, his burial, his resurrection, is coming back and you don't believe it, then you are not a believer. So baptism is for believers, not churchgoers, not Sunday school children. You must believe something. Yes, what you believe will help you to be righteous and live a righteous life. For example, uh, where is uh, yeah? You are the pastor now. Come. On. Like Shaki here, stand up because he was talking in church. He get the strap. And the staff don't stop church tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or if you give the staff, you stop church. Uh -huh. And the staff is, if you talk in church, elder will let you stand up. And everybody will look at you. Mm. And a certain man walk in, say, oh, please, elder, don't let Shaki stand up. I will stand up for him. And Shaki will sit down. So I'm the one taking the punishment of Shaki or myself. Is there still a punishment? Yes. But the man has taken it upon himself. Do you believe this man? Yes. Now he took your punishment upon himself? Yes. Because of you, that man died, you believe that? Yes. 
Because of you, that man was buried. Do you believe that? Yes. Because of you, that man resurrected. Do you believe that? Yes. He will come back again and tell you. Do you believe that? Yes. Saki, so will you still talk? Of course not. Yes, I don't talk no more. You see that? So when you believe, the Bible says, we should do what? Baptize you. But he that he does not believe is condemned. You understand? So before baptism takes place, you should be what? A believer. Amen. Not the one who will sin today, still go back, still again, go back. You are not a believer. You're not ready. This gift, your hand was out. Uh huh. Yeah. I want to ask this. Uh, uh, Mark 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, it's like jollof rice. <laughs> jollof rice does not go without tomatoes. Or can you prepare jollof without tomatoes? You can use them on Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please stand up and read. Let's listen to what the Bible says. Uh -huh. Mark. 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 <laughs> Mark. Yes. Who believe and is baptized? He, number one, who believes? Number one, who believes? Number two, and who is? Shall be what? Thank you, sit down. Has the Bible said it? Oh, have I answered your question? No, but not yet. No, no, not yet. Hold on. You mentioned believe and baptized yes. shall be saved. Yes. And the second one was, but that, but he does believe, only believe, but not baptized or not there, shall not be saved. <laughs> No, you forget the not. You forget the not. Was, yeah. was not part of uh, yeah. 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 the Hold on, let me ask you a question. I'm asking that. Believe. Yes. Yeah, and also baptize. Yes. Yes. And I'm asking. If you believe, yes, and you are, uh, you are not being baptized, yes, will you go to heaven? Yeah, will you go to heaven? Or you have to be baptized okay. because yeah, it, it tells that because you have the to second, be the second believe. The second one is it was like believe, believe not, and if you are not believing, believe not, not you are condemned. So if you believe and, and you yes, don't, you are not baptized. Will you go to I heaven? I think that's why you go okay. to heaven. Okay. 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 In your opinion. Please, please, please. If somebody is asking a question, let's all hear. Because the person she is asking it could be what you are also asking. Now, let me answer you. I know that you I've been here. That's how I'm here. All right. Now, I told you last time that when you are reading a Bible text and you don't understand the verse, what should you do? Go to the pretext. Yes. When you go to the pretext. And it's still not clear. Go to their pretext before you go to their post text. You remember that? You remember the lesson? So you can get the context. So now let's go to verse 15. Yes. Mark 16, 15. There's only one way to find out if you are there. Read Read on. Fifteen. Pretext. He said to them, Go into the whole world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes. Please hold on. Thank you. The verse 15 said, Go to the whole world and preach the gospel. Preach what? The gospel. Preach what? The gospel. What is the gospel? We will come back to them. To every creature. Now, he that, that creature that believes, believes 
what? Their gospel. We are going back to their pretext. Good. And is so believing alone is not enough. So after believing and the person is baptized, he shall be what? Saved. Now you put semicolon there. Is semicolon in your Bible? Yeah. This picture here. Check your Bible. Is it there? Is it there? Check your Bible. <laughs> it's not true. He has a Bible. I gave him a Bible last time. Okay. Is a semicolon in your Bible? I want myself to bring it up. We are learning Bible. We are not even opening it. Oh, sister, I gave it to you. Okay. 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 I have said something just now. I have said, preach the gospel to the nations, to the creatures. He that believes, one, and be baptized, two, shall be saved. He didn't put comma or a full stop. Semicolon means. But the one who does not believe, who has an NIV here? Right in the NIV with you? Okay, I want NIV. I have NIV. Okay. I had NIV. Okay. No, I, I want you to see something there. I like the King James. They subtract there. What? They subtract what? Uh huh. The NIV. Yeah. And and they sign you. No, verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Whoever does not, even the NIV said, whoever does not believe. So, sister, if you do not believe, we should not baptize you. So, that one, heaven is out. Oh, maybe I believe, I believe, but I'm not being baptized. Okay, I have one. Then it's not complete. Jesus said, Jesus said, believe and be baptized. And I said earlier on that baptism is for who? Believers. So, I brought uh, uh, Brother Shaki here. Hello, hello, I'm here. I'm the one teaching. I'm here. I brought Brother Shaki here as an example. Now, if he believes that Christ is the Son of God, yes. He came down on earth, yes. He took my son upon himself, yes. He died, yes. He was buried, yes. He resurrected, yes. He's come. That is your foundation of your Christian belief. I believe you believe that one. And you say, yes, I believe. But I forgot that, la la, forget it. Nah. Will you go to heaven? No. No. This has said, teach them and baptize them. So your obedience to baptism counts here. It's not a matter of choice, sister, that your hair, my Brazilian hair will be wet. Nah, 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 nah. Uh -uh. You don't have a choice. You must be baptized. Can you uncall you? Put your hands down. Oh, well done. Is it now? Let somebody ask. Oh, well done. Yeah, I don't understand. Why is it that the last time did not say whoever did not believe and is not baptized, but you, you put only um, the, the um, oh, not believe? Then you are bringing me back horse. Yeah. Let's go back to Matthew. Jesus said, go. Ho, 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 ho. Stop talking, eh? Our time is past 11 30 now. You are still where we are. Jesus said, go and teach them, number one. When you teach them, they will hear. When they will hear, they will repent, baptize them. So how many uh, uh, things they should do? Two. Okay? Two things. Teach them the good news. They will repent, baptize them. Mark 16, 16 says, speak the, uh, the gospel and baptize them. It always go one hand in hand, two, at the same time. So we are all believers in Christ, aren't we? Yes. Are all of us baptized? No, not yet. Your not yet is not you not willing to be baptized, but we don't have the avenue yet. Semicolon. Exactly. Semicolon. And whoever did not believe. Why is someone yes. I did baptize and not uncount? Does it so mean that it's option? It's option to be baptized. Yes. I don't understand. This is all about simple grammar. No. 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 Let me explain to her. Listen to me. It's just simple grammar. 
if you don't believe, why then should we baptize you? Yeah. Believe why first. then? Believe first. You have to believe before they baptize you. It's simple ground. No, you will not baptize them. Okay, 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 okay. We believe, but we don't want to be baptized. That's the question. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let me calm down. Let me speak to you. Oh, Kwane. Why? You don't want to do that. Mofa. You know what is in Kuto? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. You want Kuto to see her? Bride James and Andrews. Bride James. I'm going to be a mature one. I'm going to finish you. I'm going to be a good one. 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 Okay. Okay. What's your mom can I be better? We are master. What's your mom? We are master. We are master. We are master. We are not on the end round. I don't believe you are going to be able to do it. But at the end, no one said you obey Jerry. So we are back to free. Eh eh. Who Jerry? Eh eh. Who Jerry? Because they won't believe you. Eh eh. Why condemn them? Eh eh. They won't believe you. Why condemn them? Eh eh. Okay, if you put me to a position, they won't believe you. No one sign back. And the Bible is the one. No, me me yes. Amen. Okay, okay. Let me bring last point. Then we pause here. We continue next time. Okay? Let me get you ready. Now, the effect of the water baptism, the effect, something inside of you changes. Your heart is washed clean by the blood of Jesus, and your spirit is quickened alive by the Holy Spirit. If now you have the ability to communicate with God, and hears God's voice, love and obey him, overcome sin. Amen. Do you know you anymore? That's the effect you have. Connect? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right now we have <coughs> um, my bread. Mm -hmm. It falls into a powder. I take my bread out of the powder. Do you think I can see clearly? No, yes. Good. That is you from the world. You say, I have repented. Yeah? I have repented. The moment we dip you into the water, your heart is receiving Jesus Christ completely in the spirit. So it's me putting my umbrella in water and hood water. If I get it back, I'll wipe it. Can I see better now? Yes. So what we do is that the effect of the baptism is that one, your spirit is quickened. Every one of you has a spirit inside of him. That's what the Bible says. If the spirit of he who rose Christ from the dead liveth in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. Obey Kenya. So the spirit inside of you will communicate with God the moment you are in the water. It's very important. I have time. So next time you continue from the effect. So if you know the effect and the importance, you will run for baptism. Amen. Amen. Two questions, then we pause. <laughs> you continue next two weeks. <laughs> for I said two. I won't call you again. <laughs> Mama, uh-huh. I want to uh, contribute to about the contribution, the listen. Uh, believing and baptizing. Mm -hmm. When you read Acts chapter 8, yes, verse number 27, uh -huh. and an Ethiopian enoch. Very good. Uh, I, I, I'm not reading, but you can read it. When uh, Philip uh, preached the word of God unto him, mm -hmm. immediately he said, There's nothing has stayed me to baptize. Mm -hmm. Immediately he broke his heart to be baptized. Yes. That means right. he received the word. Well, if you receive the word, the word of God, you're supposed to surrender unto the instructions of it. If you refuse to uh, submit to it, that means 
You are disobeying it. Exactly. Yes. So God bless you. God bless you. That's the answer. That's the answer. You are doing this with him. You know it. We have said it a thousand times. I will call you. Uh -huh. Last one. David, you have asked a question. You too have asked a question. Ask one. Ask, ask, ask one. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, ask one. So, like, in the dining with the Lord, you cannot dine with the Lord unless you have been baptized. Yeah. Is that also, like, a Bible thing or only a Pentecost thing? Exactly. It's a good question. I like that. Yeah. See? Uh. <laughs> As a church principle, yeah. we want you to be complete in all the process first mm -hmm. before you die with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you are eager to die with the Lord, have yourself been baptized. But to be honest, I have not read it nowhere mm -hmm. that Acts chapter 3, verse 14 says, be baptized before going to the Lord. I have not read it. But it's a church principle. So in the beginning of the service, I said, most of us are repented. That the Holy Spirit in us. We are qualified to die with the Lord, but the church principle says so, 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 and so. And why is that? We want your process of salvation to be completed. Amen. And I use my umbrella falling to a powder as an example. Mm -hmm. If I pick the umbrella from the powder, it blasts off. It is neat nervous, but I can see clearly. I have to have myself being Washed or the braille being washed before you can. That's why we want you to baptize first. Okay, okay. Amen. Last one. Please, sir, I will contribute to what you are saying. Yes. Some people may think why the Catholic they can having this uh, money okay. with the Lord mm -hmm. every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Catholic, when you born in Catholic, after one week or one month, they baptize you. That's it. In their water. With the water. I was baptized in Catholic. I was raised up in Catholic. But when I, I was uh, Pentecost, I repented, 